Hello everybody and welcome to another installment of the Cognitive Theoretic Model of the Universe. So, today we're going to be talking about syndifianesis. And just a quick introduction to those who may have not seen my previous installment, my previous video on this topic being the CTMU, being the general topic. Um, so the CTMU is a cog it's called the Cognitive Theoretic Model of the Universe and it is a philosophical framework that is unified um, metaphysics and epistemology and through that uh, can be derived a, uh, a self-justified and maximally logically justified ethics. Well, th those are things that we're going to be focusing on in uh, future installments of the videos because this channel is definitely going to be talking about uh, the implications of the CTMU and multiple different categories so we'll get into all that in more advanced installments in the series so essentially the ctmu is a philosophical framework and one of the some of the main principles and axioms of the ctmu have been discussed in the previous installment uh, and i'll briefly go over them so such as the reality principle and the pr principle of linguistic reducibility the reality principle essentially says that there exists nothing outside of reality because if it did, it would necessarily be entailed within reality. And from this, you can derive that reality has ultimate freedom because there are no external barriers of freedom which it can be which can be imposed on it. So reality is ultimately free, and from that you can also deduce the fact that reality self creates and reality self identifies in multiple different ways. And so based on the strata of self-identification that reality uses as a mean to its own self-creation and its existence, we have a purpose. And we're going to get into that in later installments and we're going to lay the foundations for the cognitive theoretic model of the universe so that you have a understanding of the fundamentals and from these fundamentals we can then extract d extract deductions and we can make claims that are logically verifiable with the utmost utmost confidence because we have a fundamentally justified and self-contained system so we have to lay the lay out the fundamentals first in order for us to get into the ethical implications and the moral implications of the CTMU which is something that I will do and is something that this channel is pretty much dedicated to because I'm very interested in politics and so that, that will be a very large focus of this channel uh, um, and so far as it is laid out after we have our foundations adjusted so let's Talk about syndifianesis. So, syndifianesis is a dialectic which is used in the CTMU. Now, some of you might not be aware of what I mean by dialectic. I mean it in the philosophical context, which would be referring to an inquiry into metaphysical contradictions and their solutions relating to dialectic or dialectics. So, how does syndifianesis satisfy that definition? Well, it does so through what it tries to convey. And what it tries to convey is fundamentally that everything in reality is the same. Now, syndifianesis, the word syndifianesis itself means difference in sameness. That means in any particular differences that you can point out in reality, there is ultimately something that links them that can make them intelligible for you to even distinguish the differences. And in these dif in in this sense, the everything is the same because they are ultimately adjusted to this level of unity otherwise they would not be intelligible so the ctmu uses this as a segue and and this is very important 
uh, it uses this as a segue to demonstrate the ultimate ultimate metaphysical constituent of reality now there are people that have subscriptions to the ideas of idealism or materialism physicalism um well, idealism suggests that the entirety of reality is mind right reality is completely based upon mind and its properties however physicalism believes that the entirety of reality is based upon the existence of matter and its physical constituents and then there's you know dualism which um proposes that there is mind there's a domain of mind and then there's the domain of physicality and these two are completely separate now obviously there are different variations of these ideas and that are spurred out in multiple different ways but the ctmu is going to be focused on info cognitive monism which is dual aspect monism now why this is related to syndophionesis is because syndophionesis ultimately is a segue to info cognition now what is info cognition info cognition is ultimately just information and cognition <laughs> simply simply adjusted that is what info cognition is so in the sense that an idealist would say well reality is pure cognition it is pure mind right a materialist would also say oh reality is just purely information and physicality now i'm using information uh to mean you know something similar to physicality as that's what ultimately is the most fundamental constituent of matter that can be distinguished and identified in reality through bits and whatnot you know now <laughs> what langan does is he says that these two are ultimately inseparable and he's right and the reason why he's right is because you can't have an instance of one without the other you cannot have the identification of information you can't identify matter you can't perceive matter you can't know that matter exists you want you wouldn't be able to even categorize it in any sim single shape way or form if you did not have cognition and in the same way if you did not have information you would not be able to cognize your interpretation of information so in this way they are ultimately they they form a dual aspect monism which basically means that there is a singularity that has two sides of it so think of it as a two-sided coin you know you know the one side is information one side is cognition the coin itself info cognition that is the fundamental constituent of reality now the reason uh is a very important segue to this is because syndophionesis mean difference and sameness we can relate any you know identifiable distinction in reality between objects and ultimately that's what existence is it's just distinction distinction of identities um that's what existence is i mean if you if you try to reduce existence to the most you know most fundamental instantiation of what it is trying to convey it is ultimately going to be a distinction of identities and how does this occur through difference and sameness <clears throat> so to further demonstrate the definition of syndophionesis i'm going to read out a little passage here from the ctmu wiki now this isn't really affiliated with chris or anything or the ctmu group but somebody created it and i believe it to be uh, pretty i believe it to be a pretty pretty good resource for uh, understanding the fundamentals of the ctmu now we have the definition of syndophionesis and it is the expression and or existence of any difference relation entails a common medium and syntax reality is a relation and every relation is a syndophionic relation exhibiting syndophionesis or difference in sameness we went over this before therefore reality is a syndophionic relation that means the very existence of reality is composite of this dialectic of difference and sameness reality is differences and sameness 
Syndophionesis implies that any assertion to the effect that two things are different implies that they are reductively the same. If their difference is real, then they both reduce to a common reality and are to that extent similar. So if you can point out two things, and those two things are real, then that means the difference in those two things can be related to a singular thing that they have in common that those differences are dependent on. Now think about this. Let's say you have, let's say you have a mouse and a keyboard, right? You can distinguish the differences between a mouse and a keyboard, but the reason why they are ultimately the same in their ontology means in their categorization of their identities or in the categorization of their existence. The reason they are fundamentally the same is because they are both, their, their differences are fundamentally both dependent on something that they have in common, which is their property of existence, their property of reality. I hope that, I hope that uh, is descriptive enough for the audience. I hope that makes sense. Um, it should. Um, so, Sindifianese is the most general of all reductive principles, forms the basis of a new view of the relational structure of reality. Now, I think you can relate this kind of to um, the Hegelian dialectic, and I know this is kind of like a very, <laughs> a very frontier understanding and a very surface level understanding of Hegel. So a lot of people say that Hegel didn't actually have this as a dialect, or he didn't really say this. I, I don't, I don't really care. It's just to, uh, to make it easier to digest uh, as an example. So he had something like the synthesis, antithesis, and the thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. So I think syndifianesis in that way is sort of similar to that, but it's also is more descriptive and it is more um, it entails more metaphysical baggage that is necessary for a reality theoretic framework that is ultimately self-justified and self-contained so that is what syndifianesis is and that is the well, that is what info cognition is and that is why they are both very important and fundamental to the very nature of reality so it's going to be it for this video